Hello and welcome to the latest TES and Beat Bullying live web chat. My name is Ed Dorrell and I'm Features and Comment Editor here at the TES. Sadly, bullying is still very much part of schools uh, in this day and age, with some 32%, according to some recent research, of kids recording that they've been suffering from victimisation. As such, I am delighted to have with us here Liz Watson from Beat Bullying, who will be discussing a number of strategies on how to counter the... Uh, the phenomenon. Um, we will be discussing such things as tackling bullying both in and out of the classroom, peer mentoring, cyberbullying and social networking. Please get involved with this conversation by, hash by using the hashtag on Twitter, hashtag TESchat, or emailing webchat at tes.co.uk. While you're at it, you may as well have a look at some of the many res resources and lesson plans that we've got uh, in this area, which you'll be able to see on the page through which we're being broadcast right now. First things first, um, Liz, can you tell us a little bit about what's going on in schools right now? What are you hearing about the most recent developments in bullying? We hear a lot from our young people um, through our website about the bullying around appearance, mm -hmm. um, the way they look, what they wear, that kind of thing, especially from um, our um, females are girls and um, we also hear a lot about cyberbullying and how that affects them because within school they can be bullied and then it travels outside of school with all the devices that they use their mobile phones their mm -hmm. iPads mm -hmm. computers etc it's a phrase that we hear a lot cyberbullying but do you, do you think it's still on the rise Definitely. It's, it's a new thing and, and young people are using more and more devices mm -hmm. and we hear from our recent research that one in three of our young people have experienced cyberbullying mm -hmm. and um, one in 13 have persistent and um, intentional bullying that they experience. Do you think there's something about the nature of technology that allows kids who would not otherwise be bullies face to face? to become involved in this kind of phenomenon? Definitely. The, the fact that um, they can remain anonymous um, gives them an element of hiding behind mm. um, their devices, but also sometimes the fact that they can um, post photographs or videos or even comments around, thing, around um, comments that have been made about other people and they don't realise that that's necessarily bullying. They're not thinking about the consequences and that kind of thing. So definitely, it's something that we really need to support them with because they don't realise they're doing it and they don't realise the consequences on to other individuals. It's awful if they don't realise they're doing it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the initiatives that Big Bullying are undertaking at the moment? You've got some really interesting schemes on the go, haven't you? Yes. Um, we run a peer mentoring programme um, where our Beat Bullying mentors, we train them to, to mentor other young people uh, within their schools and also online through our website, cybermentors.org. And those young people work in their schools actively promoting um, th what they do, mentoring face to face, but also talking to other young people about how they can behave and what they can do online. So we're doing a lot around digital citizenship and how they can help each other. And we also have a lot of resources, lesson plans mm -hmm. um, that we have, many of them on your test website, um, with activities and other ideas that teachers can use to go out there and, and talk to the young people about it and help them learn. And your, your peer mentoring scheme has had some good feedback. Yes, definitely. We have um, consistent feedback saying that um, behaviour is changing, that the no amount of bullying is going down. Um, around 40% um, is reported from our schools mm -hmm. um, that they're reducing That's very in bullying. Good. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Um, this is an interesting question. Um, how would you advise individual teachers to tackle bullying if um, they're not at a school which has an effective whole school policy? Um, a lot of our web chats have similar questions to this. So how do teachers, how should teachers deal with a problem on their own if perhaps the leadership isn't up to scratch? Yeah, um, there are ways of dealing with the individuals involved. So they can um, find a quiet place to take the young people aside, um, generally one at a time, um, and talk to them, get them to talk about what's happening, what their experiences are, be non-judgmental about it, um, letting them open up and talk about it and just reassuring them that they're not alone, that bullying happens all the time. Mm -hmm. If they're dealing with the individual who is being bullied, or sorry, who's doing the bullying, yep. um, then th again, be non-judgmental about it and talk to them about the reasons behind mm -hmm. it and why, why they're doing it. Often um, the young people 
they they're doing it because of some kind of um, power imbalance because there's something that they're wanting to take control of again um, so it's helping them find out what that is and being able to deal with that the, the bully needs as much support as the person being bullied um, and whilst it's important that the person being bullied um, we recognize that that they feel victimized yeah calling them a victim is not necessarily no, the not best thing to do giving yeah. them a label absolutely so. Um, is that is that an issue dealing with the bully rather than the bully, bully e, if you will? Is that an issue that um, more schools have trouble dealing with than the actual inverted commas? Basically? Quite often, yes. A lot of schools focus on dealing with the person being bullied mm. rather than the person doing the bullying, um, and often that then creates a cycle that the the bully carries on and carries sure. on. Um, so yes, if if the the schools can deal with that, then that's very that's, helpful. That's excellent. Um, how, how can classroom teachers uh, tackle this phenomenon of invisible bullying? Invisible bullying. <laughs> um, that's an interesting question. The invisible bullying is a hard one. We generally call it mental and emotional bullying, right. the kind of stuff that is difficult to spot. Mm -hmm. um, but that can be done through um, schemes like the peer mentoring schemes, mm -hmm. in, involving the, the pupils, the students in awareness of what bullying is what it looks like and also talking to the teachers about it so that the the students know they can go to other students to talk about mm -hmm. it if they feel that there's something they can't approach a member of staff about but then also so that there are students that will go to a member of staff of and and raise the, su the subject make them aware of it so that it can then be dealt with absolutely um and, and on a similar subject um how should uh, teachers broach the subject with parents if uh, either their kid is being bullied or, which I imagine for parents is believable, but uh, broaching the subject with a parent that their kid is bully, I imagine is a lot harder. Yes, very much harder. Um, and often parents don't like to hear that. It's a difficult sure, thing for them yeah. to hear. Both, both sides are. Um, again, we would say bring them in, talk to them, do it in mm. um, an understanding way, helping them to, to s understand what's happening, giving them all the facts, helping them know what's going on and working with them to set up a plan mm -hmm. of what can be done, whether it be a safety plan for the child that's being bullied mm -hmm. so that they know how they can look after themselves and parents and staff are supporting that, or whether for the bully it's, it's a plan that's changing the way they behave mm -hmm. and the actions that they're doing. And again, they're getting support both from home and school to make that change um, and, and make a difference. Do you think, um, this is my question, do you think um, traditional discipline works with bullies? Like, is there a way of just taking a normal school approach to discipline? Or do you think there needs to be, it needs to be more sort of sensitive? They need to be disciplined for their so, behaviour. Yeah. They definitely need to be disciplined. But there is, um, they also need to be supported. So there needs to be um, a, a delving into the reasons behind it and finding out what's mm -hmm what's causing that behaviour so that that can be dealt with too. So it's not all about discipline, it's yeah, also sure. about the, the support mechanisms that they need to change that behaviour, to understand why they're doing it and, and to make a change. Yeah. Presumably more often than not there is some kind of psychological reason for why someone would yes. behave like that. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, it, it's much more common for um, a young person to, to do it because for example, they've been bullied themselves. That's one yeah. of the most common reasons sure, yeah, that yeah. they're bullied themselves. They don't know what to do with it, so they, they turn into a bully mm -hmm. because they don't know where else to go. They have nobody Absolutely. to talk to. Sure. Um, are there any preemptive measures teachers could take to create a safe environment and to minimise the likelihood of bullying? Now, presumably, a l the best way to do that is to have a whole school approach. Definitely, yeah. yes. So your anti-bullying policy, your anti-bullying strategy are combined and involve the whole school. So you have the students involved, the governors, the staff, the parents, everybody knows about it, everybody's written it, but also giving responsibility and, and um, a bit of ownership to the young people, to the students sure. in school, and giving them, some of them a role, and others just an awareness and, and a knowledge of what they can do, the steps they can take to, to do something about it. Is, is a really um, holistic way mm -hmm. of dealing with it and making sure that it doesn't happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, where I've seen it, it's more striking how proud kids are when bullying has been largely eradicated. It yes. becomes a badge of honour, doesn't it? Exactly. 
exactly. Yes. Yeah, we have um, uh, several schools that tell us how the reduction has been um, has been something they've been really proud of, and where Ofsted has um, mm. commented on it. Um, one school, um, Greenford, they have set up. Um, rooms, games rooms, where the young people can go mm -hmm. to talk, to access mentors if they want to, or just go to be in a safe zone that's out of the way of others. Um, and also for y the year sixes that have moved up to year seven, they have a space for them as well, so that if they're worried about anything, they can go and access the same kind of support. That's an interesting uh, area that you bring up, the uh, transfer period between six and seven. Presumably that is something you would really urge schools to pay attention to, because you hear a lot about kids having a, a perfectly normal time at primary school and that transfer making them either become a bully or become yes. bullied. Um, how would you recommend handling that? Um, communication between the primaries and the secondaries um, at a staff level but again involving the young people in that mm -hmm. in that communication so that the, the year sixes know a lot about the school they're going to, mm -hmm. that they um, they have they know the people they're going to meet there, whether that be the staff mm -hmm. or some of the, the young people that are going to be there, the old students, and having that two-way communication um, where they can, the young people can ask questions mm -hmm. about where they're going to be, what what's it going to be like walking around school, are they going to get bullied, what can they do if they do get bullied, all that kind of um, thing. And what do you think the best thing is for a child to do if they're, if they're being bullied? Would you recommend that they go straight to their teacher? Um, it depends on what they're comfortable with. They should definitely tell somebody. Mm -hmm. um, their teacher is a good start. Mm -hmm. um, they could tell um, a friend or a mentor within the school, somebody who they it's know it's should be. Yeah. yeah, or they could tell their parents mm -hmm. um, and make sure that once they've said something that there is action taken so that things can start to change. Mm -hmm. And if um, nothing is done and nothing is changed, that they tell somebody different so that they can make sure that change happens and that they're, it's the issue is being sorted out. Sure. Communication then is absolutely key yes, and I love keeping communication channels between kids and any number of responsible figures yes. open. Yes, definitely. And presumably you don't hear an awful lot about teachers who aren't prepared to act in this kind of thing, do you? Or is there still there a is, culture? There are still some that, that um, don't act on it, but it isn't always because they don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they, they do what they can, but they think it's sorted, and it's not. Mm -hmm. But if the, if nobody comes forward and says actually it's still going on, then they don't know that they need to do any more. Sure. And there's also the fact that teachers are very busy, and sometimes they will try, but it will get um, caught up in mm -hmm. other things that they're doing. So it doesn't always go as far as it needs to. Presumably, therefore, I appear to have lost my microphone. Presumably, therefore, part of the uh, process is to make sure that there is, uh, you, you educate the, the staff room, for want of a better word. Yes, yes, definitely. And that is, um, th that's part of the whole school strategy yeah. around it, making sure staff are aware mm -hmm. of it and know what to do. And know the, re the other um, adults involved, that the, the staff that are designated to be anti-bullying coordinator or child protection officer, whoever it is that they need to take that information to. Do most schools have um, anti-bullying coordinators? No, they don't. You would recommend it? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. It's a good way of um, dealing with it, of recording the incidents of bullying, of making sure that action is taken and that you can um, resolve any issues that are, are going on. And make note of young people that are consistently either being bullied or doing the bullying as well, keeping a track of that in some Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Tracking. Well, most schools are quite good at that these days. <laughs> Um, on the, actually, on a very similar subject, but it, I, I think it is important to pin this down. H how much responsibility does management have in preventing bullying? Do you, do you think uh, a school lead, the school leadership team should be held responsible for this? Yes. Um, they, it is their role to create a school that has mm -hmm. a positive, inclusive environment, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's driven from them, their anti-bullying policy, their strategies, what they do, mm -hmm. is driven from senior management. So they should take responsibility for that and, and for making sure that what they have in place is effective, works and is owned by the whole school. Do you think um, the, the policies that you suggest um, would fit neatly with the different kinds of school management that we now see in schools? Because we've got some where um, 
the sort of Michael Will sort of no frills approach, whereas you have others more a more uh, traditional comprehensive school approach. Do you think it, does it work? Do the same strategies work in any school environment, or do you think you have to manipulate them? They're, they're the same strategies, but in, you use them in slightly mm -hmm. different ways. So yes, they, every school is different. Mm -hmm. Every school needs um, a slightly different policy and needs to use the strategies in the best way for their school sure. and for their, their pupils. Um, but yes, that it does need to be tweaked. But mo for the most part, it's the same policy. It's and the strategies. same. It's communications. It's yes. about leadership. It's about mentoring. It's yes. Yeah. All of the above. Um, this is a hugely open-ended question. In fact, you could probably have a web chat only on this subject. So let's see how long we can go with it. Um, how can children and young people protect themselves from cyberbullying? From cyberbullying? Yes. Okay. Specifically. Um, because we've talked about, I think, quite a lot about the way uh, schools manage it on yep. a day-to-day -day basis, 9 to 3.30. Yeah, presumably a kid's watching, which they do when they're on Facebook or um, not. They need to remember and be aware of the general e-safety that they're taught and um, not sh not sharing passwords, making sure that um, they talk to people that they know or are aware that if they're not talking to people they don't know that they are people they don't know, all of that kind of thing. Um, they also need to be thinking about their own behaviour online. There's certain things that they say or do can cause reactions mm -hmm. and if we're, text, if we're talking in text, in chat, we may not think about the way it comes out when we type it. It may sure. come up, the, the context is different without the facial expression, without mm -hmm. the tone of voice. And that could be taken by the person at the other end in a different way. So just being aware of that mm -hmm. and thinking about the way you word things. Also, um, just taking time to think about um, who you're talking to and why you're talking to them. Sure. Um, and the sites that you go on to, um, going on to sites like Ask FM. Um, are they are they a place that you want to be going on to? Um, posting on negative walls on Facebook, for example, is that a place that you think you should be? Um, Behaviour-wise, if you're thinking about how you're behaving, um, um, just in returns in terms of retaliation and what might come back to you. Mm -hmm. The, we think of it as quite an anonymous arena, but it actually isn't. Yeah. Um, so there are ways for it to come back to you um, in that kind of thing. I'm really interested in this sort of psychological phenomenon that um, the internet and social networking allows kids to anonymise themselves, but not not to other people, but also to themselves. What, what, like what they do, they don't take responsibility for their own actions yeah. because they're online, and that's a very interesting phenomenon. And I don't know how schools, teachers, parents should try and. Um, educate kids about that? Um, it, it's, a, it's a difficult one. Um, digital citizenship is, is a mm -hmm. new buzzword almost. Indeed it is. Um, and that, that is one way of doing it, but it's also about, as, as adults, as staff and parents, us also sticking to some of those rules ourselves. Mm -hmm. okay, um, and um, making sure that we put boundaries in place that mm -hmm. they use. Um, the young people need to know that um, they're taking be they're taking responsibility for their behavior because that's what they should do and that we would do the same the same as in the offline arena it's exactly the same envi environment mm -hmm. it the way you behave offline should be the same you behave online and the consequences are essentially the same yes so it, it's teaching them in that same way how to take responsibility for their actions and because presumably most adults didn't, you know, <laughs> the overwhelming majority of um, parents and teachers have no experience of being a teenager or a preteen online. So they've got no, no memory of how to behave. Which yes, exactly. Which literally quite interesting. I yes, <laughs> and, and so many of our young people nowadays um, don't know a world without the internet, yep. without games consoles, without all these fantastic devices that they can use. Mm -hmm. So definitely, and understanding that to them, the offline and the online are the same. Are the same, yes. There's no, there's no seam in that, no. and, and we need to learn to talk about it in the same way, in that there is no seam. Um, all too many adults don't want to. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. A little bit of an unknown environment. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, on a related note, actually, do you think schools, parents, teachers are taking are still taking bullying as seriously as perhaps they would have done 10 years ago when there was quite a lot of public sector, pub government and public sector money thrown at the problem? Um, 
yes and no. Um, there are many schools that are making a difference that are still trying to, mm -hmm. to implement strategies that make it work. Um, but um, it, it's still an area that we need to support the children mm -hmm. and the young people in a lot more. Um, the more we talk about it, the more awareness we raise of it, the more they know what to do about yeah. it, the more they recognise it, the more we can do about mm -hmm. it. And there is, a, there is a danger that once you've talked about it for so long, it starts to become a bit blasé. Yes, that and was my point. We, yeah, yeah we've, we either stop talking about it or we don't talk about it in, in new ways. We yeah. don't take on the, the new ideas of how we can manage it and change it. Um, and what else is happening. So it is really important that schools carry on um, talking about it, implementing um, schemes that can support it, that can help, uh, and making sure that their anti-bullying strategies are in place and effective. Because it is worth remembering the amount of damage that bullying can do to a child. Yes, definitely. I mean, young people, um, they, they, they can be, be really affected into adult life yeah. through... Um, what ha what happens yes. at them, to them when they're bullied as, as young people take um, Georgia Woods for example, um, and and she she stopped it but it was having such a big impact on her life and so many of our young people yeah. take their own lives or self harm. Could you tell the story of, of Georgia Woods? Um, Georgia Woods um, is a, a teenager who um, she was severely bullied at school both online and offline um, and she um, was. She was thinking of taking her life. She wrote a suicide note to her mum, but it never actually happened. And her mum found the note. That was the way that her parents found out about the bullying. And they managed to sort it out. Um, and um, cyber mentors came into school. Um, Georgia became a cyber mentor. They've sorted, she's really turned it around. And she's become an ambassador for us now. She talks about her experiences and how she's managed to turn that around and move on with her life. But it is. Uh, something that affects them so much. Sure. Well, what a good upbeat story in the end, I suppose, yes. to finish with. Um, all that uh, leaves me with is to say thank you so much to Liz for coming in. Um, thank you to Beat Bullying. Don't forget to look at the resources. And there's lots of other good web chats coming up, so make sure you look at www.tes.co.uk forward slash web chats. Thanks, Liz. <laughs>